Welcome everyone to this module on mechanics of writing. This is lecture 2 in this series where we're discussing the various uh, properties of punctuation uh, that makes our writing effective. In this lecture we will be looking into uh, the various rules of using comma in English. Uh, generally, comma creates a lot of confusion while we are using it in writing. Uh, look at this example. Somebody said, let's eat grandma. Actually, he was trying to talk to her grandma that they would eat together. But then, by missing out a comma, it seems like somebody wants to eat the grandma. Uh, it also happens like somebody was asked what are your interests or what do you like most and uh, it went like he said I like cooking my family and my pets now because there is an uh, missing of comma what you find is actually he likes cooking his own family and his pets so by using of commas one can understand that his three interests are cooking family and pets so comma confusion can be very scary now let's uh, really understand how to use comma in a proper sense. The basic use of a comma is to set of introductory phrases, words and clauses from the main part of a sentence. So commas are generally used to separate the introductory words of a sentence. For example, surprised I backed into a table. Relieved, I gathered my things and left for the day. The initial words relieved and surprised are separated by commas because they are just introductory phrases or words and they are separate from the main part of a sentence. Similarly, commas are also used to separate introductory phrases. For example, hoping for the best, we checked our findings. Fooled by the pitch, the batsman or the batter missed the ball. Now, hoping for the best and fooled by the pitch are both introductory phrases. And they have to be separated from the main part of the sentence by the means of a comma. Again, commas are also used to separate clauses from the main part of a sentence. When he called me, I was in the middle of cooking dinner. Now here we have two clauses when he called me and I was in the middle of cooking dinner and both of them are separated by the use of a comma. Since we arrived late we decided to skip dinner. The two clauses here are since we arrived late and we decided to skip dinner and hence they are separated by the use of a comma. Now introductory clauses are dependent clauses basically because they cannot stand alone. The dependent clause is followed by a comma because it is introducing the rest of the sentence. If the two parts of, the, of each of these sentences are reversed, the sentence would still make sense. However, if we reverse the sentence parts, Placing the dependent clause at the end, we do not need to use a comma. For example, in the previous case it was when uh, he called me when I was in the middle of the middle of cooking dinner. Since we arrived late, we decided to skip dinner. But here we are putting the dependent clause not at the beginning of the sentence rather at the end of it and in this case we do not require a comma to separate them from the independent clause i was in the middle of cooking dinner when he called me we need not use a comma after the independent clause ending at dinner similarly in the case of the second sentence we 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 should not use a comma because the dependent clause is at the end of the sentence. 
Commas are also used to set off or separate explaining phrases. Now, an explaining phrase is a word or a group of words that immediately follows a noun or a pronoun. The phrase actually makes the noun or pronoun clearer or more definite by explaining or identifying it. An explaining phrase is also called an appositive. Now, if the explaining phrase is not essential to the meaning of the sentence, it is generally separated by commas. Now, let's look at some examples. Manoj ordered a dinner, a chicken dish with steamed vegetables. Now, Manoj ordered a dinner and then there is an explaining phrase afterwards, a chicken dish with steamed vegetables. Now, a chicken dish with steamed vegetables is an appositive or an explaining phrase and that is separated from the main sentence and the main noun there, dinner, by the use of a comma. So, always, if the explaining phrase are not essential to the meaning of the sentence, they are generally separated by use of commas. Mila, our company nurse, will give flu shots tomorrow. Now, Mila will give flu shots tomorrow by itself gives us the full meaning of the sentence. But there is an explaining clause or phrase afterwards, Mila, our company nurse. Now, this is, since it's non-essential, we have to separate it by usage of commas at the beginning and ending of that particular explaining phrase. So, commas are also used to separate explaining phrases or appositives. Some more examples. The President Ramnath Kovind visited the flood site. The President visited the flood site. This part of the sentence already conveys us the meaning. But here we have the name, the proper name of the President as an explaining phrase. So that has to be separated or set off by commas. Commas are also used to separate non-essential clauses. In the previous example, we had looked at that commas are used to separate non-essential phrases or explaining phrases. Similarly, commas are also used to separate non-essential clauses. Now let's try to understand what is an essential clause and what is a non-essential clause. Now for example, look at this sentence. All drivers who have had a drunk driving conviction should have their licenses revoked. Now in this particular sentence, we have a small clause which is non-essential or which is essential to the meaning of the sentence. For example, that dependent clause is who have had a drunk driving conviction. Now, if you remove that part, the meaning is lost. All drivers should have their licenses revoked is not the actual meaning of the sentence. So, such clauses which are essential to the meaning of the sentence are called as essential clauses. Let's look at another example. Sam's mother, who has trouble with directions, had, a, had to ask for help. Now, in this case, we have a dependent clause who has trouble with directions. Now, if we remove that dependent clause, the sentence would be, Sam's mother had to ask for help. The meaning still holds good. So, the clause who has trouble with directions can be called as a non-essential clause. That means, even if we remove that clause, the meaning of the sentence still holds good. So, when we have non-essential clauses in a sentence, they are generally separated by the use of commas. Now, let's do a little exercise depending on what we have learned up to now. So, we have learned up to now that commas can be used
to separate introductory words, introductory phrases, and also introductory clauses. And commas are also used to separate non-essential clauses as well as explaining phrases or appositives. Putting them all together, let's try to solve this exercise. Where should commas go in these sentences? Concerned about his future, Briz went back to school. Now, concerned about his future seems to be an introductory phrase. So, that has to be separated by the use of a comma. Soaking in the stainless steel sink, his shirt looked doomed. Similarly, soaking in the stainless steel sink seems to be an introductory phrase. I gathered all the supplies before I started work this morning. Now we have a comma after I gathered all the supplies and uh, which separates, uh, which actually uh, is the main clause or the independent clause. Let us also look at the other sentences and try to get the answers. Right. Now if you carefully observe, in the first case, concerned about his future is an introductory phrase that has to be separated from the main sentence bridge went back to school by a comma soaking in the stainless steel sink is again an introductory phrase and that has to be separated or set off by a comma i gathered all the supplies before i started work this morning now we have a dependent clause before i started work this morning in this sentence but it is not at the beginning of the sentence Generally, when the dependent clause is at the beginning of the sentence, we separate it by using a comma. But since it's at the end of the sentence, we, there is no need to use a comma. Miss Manu, the root manager, always leaves the papers at the corner. In this case, Miss Manu is followed by the root manager, which is an explaining phrase and because it's an explaining phrase or an appositive we use commas to set off the phrase the two sisters Kiran and Jess look nothing alike again the two sisters is followed by an appositive phrase Kiran and Jess so that phrase has to be begun begin and begun and ended by commas the mall restaurant offers free beverages to anyone who orders a dinner. But here, because who orders a dinner, though it's a dependent clause, but it's an essential clause. Because if we remove that part, the meaning of the sentence is lost. And since it's an essential clause, it doesn't require any comma. Finally, Joshna, who is very outgoing, has become one of my best friends. Now, Joshna is followed by an explaining phrase or a non-essential clause who is very outgoing. So, since it's a non-essential clause, it is to be separated by commas. Good. Now, let's move on and try to understand what are the other uses of commas. Now, commas in a sentence are also used to separate independent clauses. When two or more independent clauses are joined with a conjunction to make a compound sentence, a comma should follow the first clause. For example, I knew I would win, but I didn't want to appear too eager. In this sentence, we have two independent clauses. I knew I would win. I didn't want to appear too eager. And the second independent clause is preceded by a conjunction but. So naturally, the comma should follow the first clause. That is, I knew I would win. Aisha studied Spanish in college. So she decided to spend a year in Spain after she graduated. Again, 
so is a conjunction and both of the clauses are independent clauses so after the first independent clause we use a comma eta wanted to order italian food and jeta wanted japanese again the first independent clause should be followed by a comma now if independent clauses are joined without a conjunction they are separated by a semicolon instead of a comma sometimes we do not use a conjunction to separate independent clauses or join them so in such case where a semicolon is used we do not use a comma i asked my boss if i could take my vacation in september that's an independent clause he said that he pre preferred i take it in october that's the second part and both of them are not joined with a conjunction so because a semicolon is used we do not use a comma when two independent clauses are joined without a conjunction we use semicolon and not a comma only when two independent clauses are joined with a conjunction we use comma to separate the first clause commas are also used to separate items in a list for example kori sam jaffa and karan went to the conference now here find there are four people who have gone to the conference and because like they are like a list of people we separate each item using a comma similarly the horse snorted pawed the dirt reared up and ran off toward the hills now here again the ho horse has done so many actions snorting pawing rearing up and running so each of these actions in a list is separated using a comma Suman taught me how to inventory the equipment, stock the shelves, and complete a quality control check. Again, the items in a list are separated using a comma. Now, if each item in the series is separated by a conjunction, then commas are not needed. For example, Kara and Fara and Aruna left their books behind. we could have written it like kara comma fara comma aruna left the books behind but since here it is like each of the item is separated by a conjunction and so we do we need not use comma again commas are used to separating items in dates and addresses when a year is specified in a date including the month and year surround it with commas if only the month or the season is listed commas are not needed for example jodi came to delhi on june 1st 1997 right after she graduated from high school in the first case we are giving a specific date with month and year and each of these part is surrounded by commas but in the second case Jodi came to Delhi in June 1997 after graduating from high school. In this case, because we are only using the month of the year, we do not use commas to separate them. Only when a date is given, we use commas. Now, when the name of a state is included to further identify a city, set it off with commas. For example. Gaurav has lived in Purnia since last year. In the first case, we are not using uh, further information about the state of the town Purnia, so we do not use any comma there. But in the second case, Gaurav has lived in Purnia, Maharashtra, since last year, because we are using the name of the state to further identify the city Purnia. We separate them using commas. commas also separate equally important adjectives for example kathy liked the friendly talkative 
pleasant boy sitting next to her at work. Now we are using three adjectives friendly, talkative, pleasant and all of these adjectives are talking about the same boy. So because they are equally important adjectives we separate them using commas. So all the words they are describing the boy and they are answering the question what kind of boy. Right. And the other example the workmen repaired the floor with that dark aged oak flooring. Now again we find there are three words which are describing the flooring dark aged and oak and because all of them are talking about which one or what kind they are equally important adjectives hence they are separated by using commas. Commas are also used to separate sentence elements or parts of sentences. For example, we use commas to separate contrasting elements in a sentence. I interviewed well but did poorly on the written text. Now we have two contrasting elements in the sentence. I did well here but did poorly there. So to separate them, we use commas. This company needs problem solvers, not complainers to tackle our challenges. Again, problem solvers and complainers are contrasting elements. So to separate contrasting elements in a sentence, we use commas. We also use commas to separate words or phrases that interrupt the flow of thought in a sentence. For example, the task it seemed to us was overwhelming. The task was overwhelming is actually the thought in the sentence. But uh, in between there is a phrase which seems to interrupt the flow of thought. It seemed to us. Or for example, the dog remembered, however, the harsh words and cruel actions of his owner. Now it's something like, however, is a phrase or a word which is interrupting the flow of thought in the sentence. Now such words or phrases are separated by using commas. Whenever the name of a person being addressed is included in a sentence, it should be set off by commas. Jesse, Pant needs you to sign for a package in the office before you leave. Now here we see that the name of the person Jesse is being addressed and it's included in the sentence. Now that needs to be set off or separated by commas. Pant needs you to, needs you to sign for a package in the office. Jesse, before you leave. Now again, Jesse, the name of the person being addressed, because it's included in the sentence, it is separated by commas. Now mild exclamations included in a sentence are also separated with commas. For example, no, we won't be needing you any longer. Gosh, I never expected you did make such a fuss. Now these mild exclamations uh, can sometimes be set off or separated with commas. Now we also use commas in a personal letter in a, in a special way. Now we use a comma after the greeting of a friendly letter like dear aunt Mina, dear John, dear Wally. We also use comma after the closing of a friendly letter like sincerely yours or yours sincerely or yours truly. Now we have come to the end. Now we have discussed lots of usages of commas. Now let's do some exercises. Now let's do an exercise. Look at these sentences and try to identify where they have missed out on using commas. Let's look at the first one. Jane wanted to spend the summer abroad, but she had to get at least a 3.5 grade point average for her parents to allow it. Now here we have two independent clauses and separated by a conjunction but. So the first clause has to be followed by a comma. Niranjan invited his brother 
his best friend and his girlfriend to the game. Now here we have items, brother, best friend and girlfriend. And because they are in a series, they have to be separated by commas. My new apartment is located at 66 Lodha Apartments, Hyderabad and will be available on November 1, 2005. Now here we have an address given to us. So since the items in an address and a date are to be separated by commas, so we have November 1, comma and 2005. Jeremy has long lean runner's legs. Now we have two equally important adjectives long and lean and they are separated by comma. I practiced a lot for the tournament but didn't make it past the second round. Now here we have two contrasting ideas practicing not making it up. So we have contrast two separating ideas are two contrasting ideas are separated by using a comma. Let us do one more exercise. Now Isaac started mowing the yard but his father finished it. If you know of a good landscaper, please give me the name of a company. Bernice was born on November 3, 1928 and Eugene was born January 17, 1929. Marshall cut his short wavy light blonde hair. In my wallet are five crisp new $20 bills. When I travel, I pack my toothbrush, a hairbrush, a shoe brush, and a cloth brush. Now, let's put commas wherever they are needed in these sentences. In the first sentence, Isaac started mowing the yard, but his father finished it. Two contrasting ideas, and they have to be separated by a comma. If you know of a good landscaper, please give me the name of the company. Now, again, there are two. Uh, uh, there, there is a dependent clause at the beginning of the sentence, so it has to be followed up by a comma. Again, we have Bernice was born November 3, 1928. There are dates given with uh, uh, dates with numbers, um, so we they, we they have to be separated by using commas. In the fourth one, we have short, wavy, light blonde hair. It's like uh, equally important adjectives, they have to be separated by commas. In my wallet are five crisp new $20 bills. Again, uh, equally ad important adjectives and they have to be separated by commas. When I travel, I pack my toothbrush, a hairbrush, a shoe brush and a clothes brush. A series of items, a list of items. So. And there is a dependent clause at the beginning when I travel. So we use commas after the clause and also after the each of the items in the series. Right. So as in summing up, let's try to uh, gather all the things that we have learned about the use of comma. So commas are used to set off introductory words, phrases and clauses from the main part of a sentence. Commas are used to set off explaining phrases or appositives in a sentence. Commas are used to separate non-essential clauses in a sentence. Commas are also used to separate independent clauses in a sentence. Commas are used to separate items in a list. Commas are used to separate items in dates and addresses. Commas are also used to separate elements of sentence. And commas are used to separate equally important adjectives. So, since there is a lot of confusion about the usage of comma, we have to be careful. Otherwise, uh, comma confusion can create a lot of misunderstanding. So, like common sense, comma sense is very important in mechanics of writing. For any questions or queries, please approach us at the number or the mail ID or the blog spot given. Till we meet again in the next lecture, have a good day.